Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lipakshi Khurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Tuesday, the 1st of October. Pakistan violates ceasefire along border in India's Jammu and Kashmir. Front runners each claim victory in Afghan presidential election. A Nepal parliament speaker resigns over rape allegation. And now for all the details, Pakistani troops on Tuesday continued to violate ceasefire along the border, targeting forward posts and civilian areas in India's Jammu and Kashmir. Early on Sunday, at least six civilians were injured in Pakistani firing. Pakistan on Tuesday continued to violate ceasefire along the border in Poonch district of India's Jammu and Kashmir. Pakistani troops reportedly initiated unprovoked firing of small arms and mortar shelling in Shahpur and Kirni sectors of Poonch district, targeting forward posts and villages. The Indian Army was also retaliating to the fire till the last reports came in. Pakistan has violated ceasefire more than 2,000 times along the border with India this year, killing at least 21 people and injuring several others. पौने आठ से सुबह से फायरिंग है हमारे कुछ बच्चे जो है वो स्कूलों में पहुंच चुके थे और कुछ रास्ते में जो जा रहे के रहे थे और अचानक जो है वो फायरिंग शुरू हो गई जिसके कारण हमारे बच्चे जो हैं कुछ स्कूलों के अंदर ही अभी फंसे हुए हैं कुछ जो है वो घरों के अंदर शरण ली हुई है इस कारण जो हमें बहुत बड़ा नुकसान है इस एरिया में कोई पता नहीं कि किस टाइम जो है वो फायरिंग हो जाए अर्लियर ऑन संडे सिक्स पर्सनस वर इंजर्ड इन पाकिस्तानी फायरिंग इन पूंछ डिस्ट्रिक्ट रिलेशंस बिटवीन इस्लामाबाद एंड न्यू दिल्ली ऑलरेडी होस्टाइल have been further strained over India's decision last month to revoke the special status of Jammu and Kashmir. Indian Foreign Minister Subramaniam Jay Shankar on Monday met U.S. Secretary of State Mike Popio in Washington, D.C. and held discussions on bilateral relations. Post the meeting, Jay Shankar said that the trade talks between India and the U.S. have progressed and an agreement will come into being soon. India's Foreign Minister Subramaniam Jayashankar on Monday said that the trade talks between India and the United States have progressed and an agreement will come into being soon. Jayashankar made the comments after he met U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo in Washington, D.C. and held discussions on bilateral relations. Briefing media post the meeting, he said that India and the U.S. are in advanced stages of trade discussions with prospects of an early resolution. This was the fourth meeting between Jayashankar and Pompeo in the last four months and came at a time when New Delhi and Washington are in advanced stages of trade discussions aimed at reaching a trade deal soon. It was a very comfortable meeting. As I said, this is not the first time I'm meeting him. Uh, a big part of it was spent on various bilateral issues. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, in a sense, we were doing uh, stock-taking post-PM's meeting, but... Uh, Donald Trump uh, and uh, uh, both of us felt that uh, you know while uh, the trade issue had progressed for the larger relationship it was important uh, that uh, uh, we, we see some early results uh, out there. Foreign Minister Jay Shankar who is on a three-day visit to Washington DC also summed up the conference by presenting a positive view of India at the United Nations General Assembly and what global leaders think about the largest democracy. Moving on, a protest was held by Baloch activists on Monday outside the British Prime Minister's residence in London to raise the issue of enforced disappearances by Pakistan in Balochistan. The protesters highlighted that hundreds of Baloch women and children have been abducted recently by Pakistani military. Activists of Baloch National Movement or BNM held a protest on Monday outside the British Prime Minister's residence in London to raise the issue of enforced disappearances in Balochistan. 
The protesters blamed that hundreds of Baloch women and children have been abducted recently by the Pakistani military in Balochistan, a region under Pakistan's illegal occupation. They highlighted that on the 14th of May, Hanigul Baloch, a student of medicine in Karachi, was abducted along with her fiancé. She was kept in military detention cells where she was tortured for three months and upon her release, she was expelled by her university. Pakistani intelligence agencies recently adopted a new policy of abducting Baloch women and children in order to pressurize uh, Baloch political activists. Uh, they were struggling against Pakistan's, uh, Pakistani armies, Pakistani establishments, uh, injustices in Balochistan. So the situation in Balochistan is, uh, by the passage of time, getting worse. Baloch activists have for long voiced their concerns over systematic economic, social and political exclusion of indigenous Baloch people by the Pakistani state. They have been protesting worldwide to seek help from the international community and human rights organizations through protests and awareness campaigns. The front runners for Afghanistan's presidency, incumbent President Ashraf Ghani and Chief Executive Abdullah Abdullah have both claimed victory in the election held on September 28th. Preliminary results are, however, not expected before October 19th and final results not until November 7th. The front runners for Afghanistan's presidency, incumbent President Ashraf Ghani and Chief Executive Abdullah Abdullah have both declared victory echoing an election crisis five years ago when competing claims by the two men led to months of turmoil. Abdullah claimed at a press conference in Kabul on Monday that his votes are the highest in the election and the election will not go to the second round. Afghanistan's Independent Election Commission is, however, still gathering votes from Saturday's election. If no candidate wins more than half, a runoff vote would be held between the top two. There was yet a انتخابات به دور دوم نمیره و تیم ثبات و امگرایی حکومت آینده را تشکیل میتن Meanwhile, Ghani's running mate Amrullah Saleh said on Monday that Ghani had won a clear first ballot victory without offering evidence. The claims by both sides came despite the chief executive of the electoral commission saying that no candidate had the right to declare himself the winner before the results are tallied. ارقام را که ما در اختیارم دارم ام دفعه پیروزی ما ارقام نمیگم به خاطر که یک سوی تعبیر نشه پیروزی ما سیلاب گونه خواهد بود لند سلایت می باشه از ما Tight security ensured the election on Saturday was conducted in relative calm with only small scale attacks by the Taliban At least 2.2 million people voted with more votes to be gathered election commission said on Sunday Preliminary results are not expected before October 19 and final results not until November 7th. Afghanistan's National Security Advisor, Hamdullah Moheb, on Monday addressed the 74th session of the United Nations Assembly. He called on the Taliban to engage in peace talks or face defeat at the hands of the government. Afghanistan's National Security Advisor Hamdullah Mohib called on the Taliban to engage in peace talks or face defeat at the hands of the government. Mohib made the comments at the United Nations General Assembly on Monday, just days after the Afghan presidential elections in which at least 2.2 million people voted. The National Security Advisor said despite terror threats by the Taliban, Afghans sought to exercise their right and he thanked the US and the NATO allies for helping secure the country. To the Taliban and their foreign sponsors, hear this now, a message from the Afghan people. Join us in peace or we will continue to fight. As my colleague Ambassador Adil Raz said last week here at the United Nations, this is a fight we can, can win. Preliminary results of the presidential poll are not expected before October 19 and the final results not until November 7. The Taliban said on Saturday that low turnout underlined that the election was illegitimate and the Afghan people do not accept foreign imported processes. In news from Sri Lanka, as many as seven elephants have been found dead in Sri Lanka, prompting wildlife authorities to launch a probe into what reports suggest appears to be a case of poisoning.
As many as seven elephants have been found dead in the north central part of Sri Lanka, as wildlife officials in Habarana Hirivaduna Forest Reserve recovered the carcasses of the elephants. Sri Lankan police and army carried out joint operations on Sunday to search for carcasses of the elephants who seem to have died of poisoning in the wild forest resort. Initial media reports suggested that farmers may have poisoned a water hole to keep the elephants from destroying their crops. The island currently has an elephant population of over 5,000, and the authorities' suspicion that the seven elephants were poisoned has raised alarm over a heightening human-animal conflict in the island. Meanwhile, search operations are continuing to find out if there were more such elephant deaths. And in news from Nepal, Speaker of Nepal's Lower House of Parliament, Krishna Bahadur Mahara, on Tuesday resigned from the post after being accused of rape by a female employee. After mounted pressure from his party, Mahara tendered his resignation to the Deputy Speaker with reservation that it would be only for the time being until the investigation is underway. Mahara has refuted the allegation and said the accuser was trying to seek revenge for not helping her become a permanent employee at the Secretariat. A Secretariat meeting held earlier decided that Mahara will step down from the post of speaker to facilitate investigation following the accusation. Additionally, Mahara will no longer remain a member of the parliament. The Indian Embassy in Nepal celebrated the 55th anniversary of Indian Technical and Economic Cooperation or ITEC in Kathmandu on Monday. The ITEC program includes various training courses to share India's developmental experience with 161 friendly developing countries including Nepal. The Indian Embassy on Monday celebrated the 55th anniversary of Indian Technical and Economic Cooperation or ITEC Day in Nepal's capital Kathmandu. The event witnessed various cultural performances and was attended by Nepal's Minister for Federal Affairs and General Administration Lal Babu Pandit and several other top officials. Under the ITEC program funded by the Indian government, a total of 161 friendly countries are offered unique training courses, both civilian and defence, in India. It has been pivotal in contributing towards skill upgradation and human resources development in Nepal. You went for these courses. I hope most of you found them productive and useful. I hope more than that, it allows you to build friendships, it allows you to build professional relationships, and it has allowed you to spread the good word around in the expertise of the area that you study, as well as in the strengthening of our relationships, the bilateral relationships that bind India and Nepal. The ITEC program includes courses in the fields of IT, journalism, banking, legislation, education, women empowerment, law enforcement, accounts and finance, among others. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude, the top stories once again. Pakistan violates a ceasefire along border in India's Jammu and Kashmir. Front runners each claim victory in Afghan presidential election. A Nepal Parliament Speaker resigns over rape allegation. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash Newsline and follow us on Twitter at Newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.